Hey folks, I'm Jen Foxbot and welcome to Maker Quest. In this episode, we're gonna learn how to build our very own hazardous gas monitor, like this one here. Woohoo! So first of all, why would you ever care about one of these? Why would you want to build one? Well, there's actually lots of really cool and useful applications of a gas sensor. One of them would be to monitor your house, school, or workplace for uh, natural gas leaks, which are really dangerous. Another um, possible use of it would be to go around your city and check the air quality at different points in your city, like by a freeway or something, um, and for different citizen science type projects. And, you know, you can also use it to call your friend out if they fart or something like that, and then maybe blame it on the dog. Ladies, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so tons of practical uses for a hazardous gas monitor. Um, this one has an LPG, or liquid propane gas sensor, a natural gas, also known as methane gas sensor, and a carbon monoxide gas sensor. So three different types of sensors that are all fed into one microcontroller and the data is uploaded to the internet. Um, so in this video, I'm really only going to kind of talk about the general overview of the project. So check out the tutorial for more detailed instructions on how to build it, including a whole uh, list of materials for the project. Um, so uh, to make it portable, first we need to make sure that the system can run on a battery. And so the one kind of tricky part with this project is that the gas sensors have heater coils that require a lot of current. So each gas sensor consumes about uh, uh, 0.17 milliamps of current at 5 volts, which is a lot, especially for a microcontroller to output. So in order to save the battery on the microcontroller side, we need an extra set of batteries specifically for the gas sensors. Um, and so that was kind of um, a design um, thing that I had to figure out. And so there are a few ways to go about it. I decided that the best option for me would be four AA batteries, which output enough voltage and they'll last maybe about four hours. So it's not very long, but at least you can take a measurement and then turn everything off. Um, so yeah, so that's a quick overview of batteries. You can also use lithium ion batteries or LIBs. Um, the only tricky part is that they usually have a lower output voltage, so you might need to boost that with an additional circuit component. Uh, the total system cost is about $100, including the microcontroller, which is probably the majority of the cost. Um, if you want an easier project or a cheaper project, you can choose one sensor out of the three. The last thing that I'll mention about the system design is that because the sensors take about three to five minutes to heat up, you want to turn the battery power on for them first. So in this design, I have the little toggle switch controls the battery voltage for the sensors. So I turn this on first and then I wait about five minutes and then I turn the side switch on, which is the power switch for the microcontroller. So once I turn that on, the microcontroller will start uploading data to the web server. Oh, and then since I wanted to upload data, I use the Photon microcontroller, uh, which is really easy to connect to the internet. Uh, the only issue with that one was that there's a kind of a limited number of pins, so there wasn't enough space for an LCD screen or another type of screen. So to kind of deal with that, um, I wanted to be able to monitor immediate changes in gas levels. The whole point of this is to make sure that everything is safe. If you have a leak, you need to know immediately if you're in a situation where there's you know dangerous level of natural gas, which is explosive. So I added these three red LEDs, which turn on if the gas sensor reading is above a certain threshold. And then as kind of a cap on the whole thing, I added a buzzer as well. And the buzzer will go off if any one of these three are above the um, absolute maximum safe level that's given by OSHA. So yeah, that's pretty much it. So um, now we get to see it in action. This test is designed mostly to test the LPG and NG uh, gas sensors. So I have a barbecue out here. I'm gonna go ahead and open the propane tank. I'll stick the sensor kind of, well, uh, here. And not get all the meat juices on it and stuff. Um, and then I have my data stream up here. So I'll be refreshing it to see um, how it changes. All right, so let's go. No one, no one light a lighter or anything. Oh, oh, cool. Oh, it's buzzing. Yay. That's a good sign. Cause that means that 
it uh, one of the readings was over threshold, which I would expect because I opened the propane tank. So you shouldn't get that high of a reading in normal day to day life. Um, it looks like my internet is being kind of finicky though. So not every value is printing. Um, but that's what's nice about having the buzzer. And then, oh, so it's the natural gas one that's going off. Interesting. Huh, that's super cool. So it looks like it works. At least it'll warn you if something's leaking or something like that. So even though I'm not getting values here because we're a little too far from my uh, Wi-Fi, um, it'll still tell you if something's dangerous. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the tank off and hopefully that'll turn off eventually. Oh, yeah, that smells bad. Was that you? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh yeah, look at that. So the natural gas reading hit almost 2000, which is really, really high. The liquid propane went up to about 630 uh, and CO changed very, very little. So that's what we would expect. Super cool. Yay, science. That's pretty much it. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions about this project or uh, if you're looking for other cool ideas uh, using this same basic concept. Thank you for watching and please subscribe.